Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a great day. So before I end of the day, there's just one thing I wanted to go over that showed up in a comment in one of my videos I did where I was talking about using Graphene OS and one of its features. One of the people said, you know, I would love to use a device like that, but I can't use an alpha operating system. This stuff is so buggy, I'm not using an alpha. This is, you know, I can't use something like that. And I imagine they were not referring to something like, you know, alpha male, Arr! They were referring to alpha as in it being a piece of software that's filled with even more bugs than a piece of beta software, which is usually known to be buggy because it's new and it hasn't had the bugs worked out of it yet. So I've been using this as my daily driver for almost a week now. And I wanted to say that I have not experienced any of these bugs of any type. I love this operating system and this is going to be my daily driver and it will be using Graphene OS. This is a great operating system. It is an operating system, not a ROM. ROM stands for read-only memory. This is not read-only memory. This is not in ROM. This is an actual, honest to God, full-blown operating system. And it works amazingly well. I have been using it for a week and I have not experienced any bugs whatsoever. I have experienced a couple of idiosyncrasies, which I'll talk about here in case you're experiencing them. The first thing is this operating, this takes a very different approach to how stock Android does of running apps and other things like that. And so sometimes when you try to start something like a banking app, or certain password managers, it may open and then immediately close. That's because those applications are programmed like shit and they don't work when after, on an operating system that actually tries to take your security seriously. If you are using a shitty app like that, you can long press the app, click app info, and there's actually an option for a workaround for shittily programmed apps and it's very easy to find. So if you're opening a certain banking app or a certain password manager, you literally just long press app info and there is a toggle switch for apps that are programmed like shit and then those apps will then work again as they did in stock Android. That is not because the operating system is buggy, that is because the operating system is actually trying to protect your privacy and your security, and a lot of apps on these devices don't really care about your privacy or your security. Surprise, surprise. This takes a really interesting approach to things. It runs things using Google Play Framework and services and all that. If you want, you can install it if you want. It doesn't come by default. However, when it runs those things that do all the spying, which I'll include links to down below, it doesn't run them as a privileged user. It runs them as a normal schmuck. So this is a very, very oversimplified way to say it. Imagine it like the difference between giving somebody you don't trust guest access to your computer versus root access to your computer. If you don't trust somebody, there's not a lot of bad stuff they can do as a guest. There's a lot of bad stuff they can do as a root user. So you could still have stuff like Uber and Grubhub and Lyft and maps and your banking apps all work. You can install Google Play services and framework on here if you want. However, it will be run in a sandbox. It will no longer be a privileged user and it will not be as able to do all that bullshit spying that you see in the links that I have down below, which is really cool. So there are some apps where you're gonna have to run that. I wouldn't call that a bug. I would call that a feature. And I mean this in the best way possible. Disabling certain applications from spying on you is a good thing. And having workarounds in here so that when there is an app that doesn't play nicely with it, you just toggle a switch and it works, beautiful. Uh, the other thing that I've noticed with this device, there was one app that crashed on me, but it was a new app that I installed that I had never used before anyway. And when I looked at the reviews of it on Play Store, I saw that there were a bunch of one-star reviews from people with normal operating systems, not graphene, that were all saying it crashed. So, for the last week, I've been doing everything that I usually do on my phone. I can do YouTube live streams. I can use, do, use banking apps. I can uh, you know, use uh, like watch videos, listen to audiobooks. I can do my email for my businesses, my nonprofit. I can deal with Freshdesk and other ticket managers to deal with customers. All of that stuff that I used to do before, I can do on this device as well just without having Google constantly report back my location, uh, you know, what, what I'm doing, what I'm looking at, and all this other shit. It, I really don't feel like I'm using some sort of alt-tech device where nothing works properly. I feel like I'm using a device where I have all the benefits of what I had before, but without having to deal with all the spying and other crap. Even if you're not comfortable with Google Play services and framework and everything else being installed as a normal user rather than as a, a more privileged user, if you, if you really want to be paranoid with it, you could just start a new user profile and only have Google Play services and framework on that profile but that doesn't have all your information on it. So if you want to install an app that requires Google Play services and framework, you could just have another profile. I didn't go for that approach because switching back and forth between profiles takes a lot of time, is a royal pain in the ass, and I just, I know myself well, and I'm, I'm, I'm never going to make the time to do that. It's just, I'm not going to do that. So I just installed it as a normal user, and I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that approach, and I'm happy with... The, the, the level of security that I have 
doing doing that. Again, it has a lot of cool features like you know sandboxing storage that certain apps can only see certain things and they think they have all the permissions when they don't actually have those permissions. You know, my, my S10e didn't have that, my LG V60 didn't have that, but this has that. I really do not feel like I'm giving anything up here. The one thing I feel like I'm giving up is with hardware. So if you want to use this operating system, you're, you're using a Pixel. Like, you know, my, my, the other guy at work, Harpo, said something along the lines of it's funny how little tech freedom you have when you actually start, you know, uh, looking for devices that give you tech freedom. And one of the examples of this is like the framework laptop. I'm using Windows on it. I used to use Linux on my laptop. And you said, like, well, why are you using Windows now? Well, if I use Linux, I need to have a discrete GPU because DaVinci Resolve on Linux will only work with an AMD or an NVIDIA GPU, not an integrated. Uh, I can't use an Intel Irish GPU for DaVinci Resolve on Linux. It just doesn't work. It does work in Windows. Now with the framework, you, if you want, there's, there's a lot of different hardware choices. You can get a framework with an Intel Iris GPU and a Ultrabook processor, or you can get the one with the integrated GPU and the Iris pro and the you know, Ultrabook processor. Or you can get the one with the integrated GPU and the Ultrabook processor. You see, you see where I'm going here. And it's, it's really like one of these things where when you start caring about certain elements of tech freedom, because it's something many other people don't care about, you wind up being very, very, very limited because there's limited funds in the space, limited funds for hardware, limited funds for developers. So you wind up with these little compromises. And for me, the compromise is I'm using a Pixel 6 Pro. I got this phone for free. And I still feel like I got kind of scammed because I'm missing a headphone jack and I'm missing the micro SD card slot and that shit just pisses me off. So like, you know, I can't plug in this lovely lavalier microphone and charge at the same time, which is annoying because this phone has garbage battery life even though the battery is gigantic. Um, and it also slow charges, which is annoying. But the, so I had to get a dongle. That's a compromise for me. Like I, got, I had to get a dongle. I feel like a fucking Apple user. I have a dongle to be able to do the same shit that I was able to do on my older device, which is cheaper than this one, which is just, oh my God. So I have a dongle that splits my USB-C into a USB-C microphone port and a USB-C charger. And I have a second dongle for when I wanna have charging and a headphone jack. It's like, oh, not one dongle, but two. And when it comes to storage, I can't store stuff in the phone and I am not gonna be using Google Drive for my stuff I don't want to have some creep looking through my pictures and shit, reporting me to the police because over a medical photo, because they're uh, like, no, we're not, we're not doing that. So um, you're gonna be doing a self-hosted cloud that is, has end-to-end -end encryption, and I am putting that on an encrypted CentOS install. So if like I, so I'm slightly less worried about the prospect of if there is you know if it gets taken or anything like that, and I'm doing a self-hosted cloud. This is still a massive step back, so I have to figure out okay what are the files that I want immediate access to on my device, and what are the files where it's like okay you know I'm gonna scroll through this every now and then to show somebody something, but I'll be okay with having that. Like it still feels weird. I prefer having all my stuff on my phone. But again, it's, it's like, you know, the choices. Like with Graphene OS, I can either put it on a Pixel that has no micro SD card slot, or I could put it on a Pixel with no micro SD card slot, or I could put it on a Pixel like, yeah. With tech freedom in the very beginning, you know, it, it is what it is. You're limited uh, a bit in this. And I'm sure Daniel McKay could better explain why the Pixel was chosen. There are certain security features, ironically, when you're using a Google phone that you don't get with a lot of other Google phones. So if you want a phone that's very secure and you want a good de-Googled Android phone, literally one of the best hardware vendors is actually Google. I know that's a tough pill to swallow, but again, Daniel McKay could probably explain it way better than I can as the lead developer. And also, when it comes to things being alpha and buggy, one thing to understand, the Android open source project, which this is based on, uses a pixel as its piece of reference hardware. So with other operating systems or mobile operating systems, you may see, oh, I don't know, this volume button works funny here, or like, you know, I randomly get disconnected from Wi-Fi here, or the camera, the front-facing camera works, but the rear-facing camera, the phone reboots and all that other shit when I try it. You're not gonna have that when they're using the Pixel, because again, the, it is based off of the Android open source project, and the Android open source project uses a Pixel as the reference design. So like, you're not going to be dealing with a device where you have a bunch of bugs and nonsense and other issues the way you will with certain other operating systems. Again, the downside of that is that you are stuck with a pixel, which is a big, is, is a big downside. But I'm putting together a nice 
little device over here to use for my cloud it's end to end encryption, encrypted storage. And on top of that, it's going to be using two SSDs in RAID 1 for, because I had a couple lying around, the, for fast loading of stuff. And um, so if I want to be able to scroll and, you know, I don't know, find a, a picture that I took in summer of 2018 or some shit that I can, or a video from 2016, hopefully I'll be able to scroll through it just fine. I will go over how that works out. I told you guys that I tried using Nextcloud and it worked like absolute dog shit. There's a lot in terms of the configuration that could have been done better. And I'm gonna see if when the configuration is done better, if it actually works well, and I'll maybe do a live demonstration once I get all of that stuff set up. So the TLDR of this is if you want to try out an alternative Android operating system that respects your security, that respects your privacy, that in my opinion is one of the most secure of them all, uh, take a look at Graphene. Don't don't let this idea get in your head that this is going to be like horribly buggy. Like I don't know, trying some like Cyanogen mod back in the day, uh, back you know on some random Android phone where like it's so cool, but there's a bunch of shit that doesn't work right, and then you only figure it out after you install it. This works really really well, and uh, like you know they focused on making it work really really well on one series of phones. And I believe that they have achieved that. I do not feel like I'm using some sort of alt tech where I have to sacrifice usability, where I have to sacrifice stability, where I have to sacrifice shit working properly. Everything on this works the way I expect it. I did have some bugs with the YouTube app. The pinch to zoom for the camera is horrible, but I'm gonna blame YouTube, the YouTube app for that for one reason. The Graphene OS camera app actually has better pinch to zoom than when I'm live streaming and using Google's own fucking YouTube app. I shit you not. The Graphene OS camera app actually has very, very good pinch to zoom. It's very, very precise. It's very, very quick. And when you're doing a YouTube live stream, like I do this and I get nothing. And then I do this and then it like zooms in all the way. It's just, it, it's absolutely horrible. I don't blame Graphene for that at all. Uh, the YouTube app also has some bugs with chat where sometimes even though live chat is clicked, it, the chat just disappears from the screen. You have to click chat and then click live chat twice and then it shows back up again. But again, it was doing that with my S10e, which runs standard stock Android, not some sort of different custom OS. So that's not really on Graphene. The one thing that drives me a little bit, eh, I, don't, I don't know why this is, it's probably me missing a setting, it's probably user error on my part, is the camera app. The camera app, both on my Calyx OS device and the 4A 5G, and this, the Graphene OS Pixel 6 Pro. The camera app it ships with, I cannot figure out how to get that shit to do 60 frames a second. Even when I lower the resolution to the lowest resolution, I still can't find an option to choose 60 frames a second. It always records at 30. And again, not a big deal. If you want, you can install Google's camera app. You're welcome to install Google's camera app and you can block it from going online so that it doesn't have the ability to report back shit on you. But again, I'm just not, it's, it's not the biggest deal, like 60 frames a second versus 30. But I would like to have the option. I'm sure I'm probably missing something. The option is probably there in the camera app hidden somewhere. I just can't find it. And somebody in the comments will probably point out what I was missing and that it was right in front of me. So maybe it's there. It's just not as intuitive. Maybe I'm just being an idiot. But point being, this is very stable. I'm going to continue using Graphene OS with this device as my daily driver. I have chosen to make this the phone that I do all my business. But again, uh, you know, I run a, a for-profit repair shop, a media company that, that does YouTube and Amazon affiliate stuff and other streams, recorded videos. I reply to a lot of comments on it. And I run two nonprofits. I deal with fresh desk ticketing systems and all, you know, I do vo uh, deal with a voice over IP with a free PBX box for my ho work phone system. I'm able to do all of that on Graphene OS without any issues. So if you want to try this out, give it a shot. I was able to install this on a phone. I'm a moron. If I can install this and make it work, then so can you. Um, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And if anything, I hope this video makes you feel just a little bit more comfortable with the idea of using a different operating system on your phone. You're really not losing a lot. I, I, you know, I would dare say you're not losing anything at all. Literally, all you're losing is hardware choice. You're losing the ability to have a micro SD card slot and a headphone jack. And chances are, with how few phones are out in the market nowadays with a headphone jack and a micro SD card slot, a lot of the people watching this probably lost that anyway. Don't get me wrong. I miss being able to plug this shit in my phone. I miss this. I like this little mic and I go back. I miss this little microphone. I love this little microphone. The prop, but I, you know, I got a USB-C Sennheiser microphone. 
I got a nice USB-C Sennheiser microphone now, and I got my, I honestly think this thing sounds a little better. It's closer to me than a shotgun is, so you're gonna have less of the early reflections from the room, and there's a higher signal to noise ratio because the microphone itself is closer to me. It's, it's actually, it's convenient to carry like this. This really shows in your pocket. This is a really big, um, really big windscreen. This over here, since it's a lavalier, is a tinier windscreen, so it fits in my pocket. And I, I think this, anyway, uh, I, I, I'm just kind of rambling at this point, so I'm gonna end the video so that I can go to, go to sleep. And uh, you guys, consider trying out Graphene OS. It's really not as hard as it's made out to be. And you'll, you, you'll probably be happier as a result of running this on your phone instead of Google shit. Get out of the gulag, says the guy who's gonna post this video to YouTube. But you should watch it on Odyssey. Again, I make money if you watch it on YouTube. I'd still prefer you watch it on Odyssey. Check me out. Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling now. See you later. Enjoy your night. Bye-bye.